All right, good morning, and thank you for um, zooming in um, on um, getting close to the uh, general uh, close. Uh, you know what? Um, it's been busy. Sorry, I've got a tongue tw tongue tied this morning. Um, numbers. I know you guys like numbers. Um, we have current registration numbers at three hundred and seventy-two thousand eight hundred and sixty-one. We have re request on hand for absentee ballots. 110,951 and have mailed out 97,000. Um, we currently have um, voted, and this is a big number, 9,395 people in, um, in the House at the Montgomery County Board of Elections as of yesterday, and we were open all day. So these numbers are really big. Um, we are uh, continuing to process um, all of the ballots that are coming in. Um, we worked, you know, shifts this weekend uh, because people were concerned when they drop off their ballots. It does take us a couple days to process the ballots. It's not an automatic thing. Like if you drop off your ballot, it's automatically processed. Um, there are many steps that we have to go through, including opening the ballot, scanning your ID envelope, checking to make sure all the information on the ID envelope is your information. And then um, we have to actually flatten the ballots out, cut the top stub off, and then they have to go through a scanner. So that's, that's what takes a little time for uh, the track your ballot uh, module that's on our website uh, to say received, that your ballot has been received. So give us a couple days after you drop it off. Um, we're trying to keep up as fast as we can. Um, we've hired some extra people. We actually have about 24 extra people here um, helping us um, at the Board of Elections to handle you know, multiple facets, early voting, um, uh, precinct, uh, getting ready for the precincts. I mean, that's a, that's a big day. Um, uh, traffic, you know, maintaining uh, traffic control of people and vehicles. Um, so it's a big process. Um, one of the things I've gotten some questions about is voter intimidation or, you know, what are we going to do about that? I haven't, since I've been here, experienced problems at the polls um, with that. Um, I don't expect to have any of it this election. However, we're always prepared and uh, basically what we tell our precinct election officials, and I'm just going to read from the Secretary of State's uh, manual, precinct election officials must contact the Board of Elections office and or the appropriate law enforcement official immediately if they experience a problem with conduct of any person at a polling location. So each uh, precinct uh, or lo and or location has the number of uh, the emergency number here at the Board of Elections, uh, their local police department or sheriff's department number, and of course 911, and they're trained on that every single training session that we conduct here at the Board of Elections. Jan, you say that, <laughs> okay, hey, well, I'll just follow up on that, Jan, if you yeah. can hear me that. Yeah. You know, you, you said uh, you've been there um, through a couple of different election cycles, and while we always hear these anecdotal stories, you've never actually had people report to you about voter intimidation. No, I haven't. And I've been working, you know, in elections in Montgomery County for 22 years, and I, I haven't um, experienced anything um, that hasn't been, I mean, there have been a, let me think, I was an observer once, and there was a few um, episodes back in 2008 when I was not an employee here at the Board of Elections. Um, but I was able to call the Board of Elections. I remember, I just recall this, and the situation um, was quickly handled and it was more with electioneering uh, within the 100 feet area. And that, that's the main thing that happens on election day. And as soon as people are told the law and the rules, um, they, um, they follow it or we call the, we call the uh, police. Um, so, I mean, even that is more of a violation of the, of the you know, voting zone more than actually trying to um, intimidate people uh, to either not vote or to vote in favor of a certain candidate. Right, right. And, you know, you're going to have electioneering because electioneering is part of voting. Um, we have people standing outside the 100-foot mark here at the Board of Elections handing out their slate cards for their candidate, their party and or a uh, specific candidate, and that, that's permissible. As long as they stay. Um, the 9,395, are those the ones that just voted in person? Um, I'm sorry, Mike, you, you, I was following up on your question. No, go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. Finish. Okay. Josh, the nine, say that again. 
The 9,395, uh, are those the ones that just voted in person? Yes, sir. Do you know how many ballots have come back in the front by mail at this point? I am going to, I'm, this is a guesstimate, about a third. So about 35,000, wow. which is a lot. We're excited to see that. And I know um, our mailbox outside is, you know, we're emptying it um, as quickly as they're filling it. And we also have another mailbox in our lobby area. So people that, you know, drive up into the parking lot and parking is free as always can just drop it off in the lobby as well. There's another drop box there. Do you have any information as far as the partisan breakdown of the people who are voting at this point? Do you, I, mean, I don't know if that's something you have access to. Um, let me check our web. Um, Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I don't think I have that, um, but I do have by party um, how many, you know, who's been mailed a ballot by specific parties, and that's on our website under absentee reporting. Gotcha. Now, one last thing I wanted to ask about the um, in-person voting. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever I said last question, that's never true, by the way, you know that. <laughs> but uh, the in-person voting, um, uh, we have had some people call us asking about those people standing outside the office, giving right. out materials, and that they're allegedly in the handicapped parking spots. Um, could you talk about that? Like, it, 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 I was out there and I, they are taking up some of the parking garage space. Are, are, those, are they in the handicapped spots? Um, sometimes they do park in the handicapped spots, uh, spots to begin with, and then we have to recreate handicapped parking spots. That goes on every election. So we have recreated um, the handicapped parking spots. So we have to, we have to do that. Um, what happens is, one, I think a couple years ago, one of the candidates parked in a handicapped parking spot. We got a legal opinion that um, they could leave their van there. So now that's kind of caught on with some of the candidates. They'll take that spot early on. So they always have that spot there. And then we just have to move the handicapped spot down. If it becomes, you know, they take up to anything closer than that and it gets out of hand, then um, I will designate, um, ask them to move their vehicles. Okay. So you take non-handicapped spots and then turn them into handicapped spots. So exactly. Exactly. But we have, I haven't had any complaints, but you have. So, um, but yeah, I don't know those people noticed that there had been additional spots created, so they may not. Oh, have. okay. They might have been full because um, a lot of people, a lot of handicapped people like to vote early. Um, so we even um, have a handicapped voting area specifically for people when it gets really busy, so they can just go to the first floor uh, to cast their votes. And, and that's make the curbside voting area there in the garage? We do have curbside voting available for um, disabled or people who... Um, are mentally afraid to come into the location because of COVID or have COVID or COVID-like symptoms. Have you had any issues with people coming in to vote in person and refusing to wear a mask? No, no, amazingly, um, no. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Jen, I wanted to follow back up on, you mentioned uh, the one time you, you had a few problems in 2008, but you were actually not working for the Board of Elections yeah, and you were yeah. serving as a a watcher or observer, um, right. those, those two terms, are they interchangeable, watcher and observer? Yes, yes. Poll watcher, poll observer. Okay, so take us through who uh, provides them. Are, does each party provide those? How does that work? Right. Observers are um, appointed by um, the parties, the Democrat or the Republican Party and or other parties that are the major party, Green Party, maybe Libertarian Party. The paperwork is filed with our office prior to the election. And um, they also can um, issues, like if there's a big issue, like say a levy, um, they can appoint, the levy committee can appoint an observer uh, to be here at the polling location, here at the Board of Elections or at the precincts. Um, they could have an observer at every precinct where the issue is. And what an observer does is simply observe the process. That, that's all you do when you're an observer. Usually, um, the parties will conduct observer training um, so they know what to do um, um, when they observe um, and whatever the party or the issues group is having them observe for 
um, to report back later. What are they, what are they, I mean, basically allowed to do? They, they are obviously allowed within the 100 feet. Right. Um, and they're just watching the voting process, but they are not allowed to talk to people. Take us through what they're kind of allowed to do. Yeah, we've had a couple observers every day here, one from the Republican Party and one from the Democrat Party. And um, I, they come in, we uh, swear them in with an oath, we give them a uh, observer tag and they go downstairs. One usually goes downstairs and they sit and they watch uh, the voters come in and how we handle it. And uh, then maybe they'll get up and walk around a little bit. Um, they might go outside. Uh, we had one observer sitting outside by the mailbox, um, just watching the process. And that's what they do. They're, they just watch or observe. Now, they might ask us questions when we're not busy, but um, we don't have to answer those questions um, when we're in, in the middle of the process. Or really, um, uh, if we're busy, we don't, ha we don't have to respond to their questions. If they had concerns, do they, are, is their procedure to take it back to their party and then the party reaches out to you, or how does that work? Yeah, that, that is the official policy, but um, a lot of times we can just handle their questions um, as they come. So that's what we've been doing here. And uh, if they're serving as a, a poll watcher, poll observer, they are not uh, supposed to be interacting with any voters? Correct. All right. They, they, they're not like um, a, um, voter protection league or, you know, um, adversaries for the voter and like, you know, you, you, you should have asked this or no, you shouldn't be doing that or, you know, whatever they think um, the voter should or shouldn't be doing. That's not their place at the polling location. They're, they're just supposed to be there to watch the physical uh, administration of the vote. Exactly. Uh, and we, we sure. haven't had trouble with observers if if we do we just um i have an extra copy of what an observer is supposed to do and i give that to them um and let them read through that or call the issuing agency um uh, but it's been a smooth process and so but you're used to having them on hand because oh, you know we've heard we've heard some national reports of like at philadelphia city hall the observers or poll watchers being kicked out and told they're not allowed in there no 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 all of our precinct election, election officials know that observers are permitted are permitted in the location um so long as they have their paperwork and they have to bring their paperwork in with them and then they have to be sworn in and they're they have just as much a right to be there as anybody else okay i i think that's good um you, you were saying that the 9,000 in-person votes is right. a big number. Is that like far ahead of say at this kind of a similar time in 2016? Yeah, Mike, I would say, um, I don't have the exact day, but on our first day of voting, we had two and a half times the amount of people that we had on our first day of early voting in 2016. In total, we had 33,000 people vote in person in 2016. And I think we're going to surpass that number. And then obviously the, the mail-in balloting is smashing wow. all, all <laughs> right? I That's mean, huge. That's huge. You, and if people, you know, people, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. Well, you've got 110K uh, requests so far. That's coming up on a third of total registered voters. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, and you and 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 the dead. I mean, they they have to request by October twenty seventh. But you consider that that's still two weeks away. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you you may end up with somewhere between a third and a half. We uh, might. Of people doing mail in voting. We may. And um, just FYI, the Secretary of State is doing another supplemental um, mailing of absentee ballot request forms just to those people that registered um, after Labor Day that weren't. Uh, in the first batch of requests um, that were caught, you know, between that and the filing deadline, which was October 5th. Okay. So if they don't have them yet, they may still be on the way to them. Right. Or they can download one online, but it has to be sent in um, snail mail still because we have to have the original signature. And let me talk about the signatures because there's always some, there's some stuff going around um, about, you know, throwing out ballots because signatures and et cetera. In the presidential primary, we were not able to count only 59 ballots because of signature problems. 
Um, when a ballot comes in, I, I, I want to go over the, re, if you don't mind, the signature review process. Um, it's scanned, the, the ID envelope itself is scanned, and then it's sent to each of our processors' computers. They look at that information and compare it to all the voter data history that we have for that voter. They compare the signature on the ID envelope with the signature that the voter first registered under or first registered under. Now, over the years, sometimes people's signatures change because they get old or um, they are ill. And we can kind of tell like a, you can tell when somebody's aging just because their signature gets a little, um, sometimes a little wonky. Um, but we check um, not just one signature. We have all their voter history if they've signed any petitions. So we go through anything that we have in our data system that is their signature. And then if it doesn't look like it's their signature, it goes through two more steps where it's reviewed by a supervisor and then finally brought to either Steve Harsman or myself for final review. Um, and the, the person has also sent a letter to correct their signature. So this is a good thing because you want to make sure that um, somebody else isn't voting your ballot. And you said fi only 59 last time were thrown out, which would be like less than one tenth of 1%. I don't know about the percentage, but a lot of a lot of it was for, and I don't know the percentage on this, but people just didn't sign. And then we try to contact them and they don't get back to us. So that, that happens a lot too. So make sure you fill out everything on that ID envelope and just take your time. Okay. And you'll be fine. Are there any recurring issues you're seeing this year on the requests or the ballots themselves that you should advise voters, hey guys, make sure you do this or don't do this or look out for this? Date of birth and signing the ballot are the two things I've seen. I'm, I'm good. Um, I have a question. Um, as far as curbside voting goes, I mean, have, how has that been going on that end? Because I know we talked a lot about um, in-person and uh, the drop-off. Right. It's been a little bit uh, busier than it was in 2016 because it applies to people that have COVID or COVID-like symptoms or are mentally not prepared to enter the polling location, uh, but it's going very well. It's very slow. And another question, as far as voter registration, have we been seeing more voters registering this year compared to like past general elections, or do we have that number? Um, I. It's a little less... We, I think we had about 10,000 more. You know what, I, Allison, I'll have to get back to you because I, I, don't, I okay. don't know. I don't know. Yeah, just interested to know but about it, that. Most of the voter registrations um, have been online, not paper. So we've seen a big increase in online voter registrations, which is great because they're easier to process, take less time, and therefore we can do more. <laughs> <laughs>